like to say hi to Scott. Scott, good to have you back. Thanks for what you've been doing. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. All that is with me. And all that is within me. And Pastor, bless his holy name. Let's say that together. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. And forget not all of his benefits. Right? He saves my soul from destruction. Amen. He heals all of our diseases. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Lord. We have a number of people out sick. And Pastor Tao Timot, who was also hospitalized yesterday. Did your papa home? Uh, his blood pressure was very high, so we want to stand in the gap for for Pastor Tao Timoti. We also want to pray for uh, Julie, who's out sick. We have a number of other people. Good to have Brother Cleo back with us. So. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good, amen. Well, I, do you have your shofar again? Michelle has hers, amen. Well, Michelle, why don't you bring it up? If you all girl, if you ladies remind me when you bring the chauffeurs, I'll have you bring it. Bring it up and blow the trumpet. And then we'll yeah, blow the trumpet. Thanks, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Come on up. Anywhere you want to be. Lord, you are not a 
down that you should lie. No, if your arm's short, you cannot perform your word. And so Father touches his body by his stripes. He has been healed in Jesus' name. We lift up the other saints of God. They belong to this congregation, oh God. They're not here with us today because of their sickness, Lord. We ask that you would touch their bodies, Lord. That you would heal them, Lord. That you would raise them up, oh God, so that they may be in the assembly of that faithful Lord. Father, Lord, we ask now that you would come into our midst, Father. Lord, that each one here today, though we are but clay, Lord, and you know our frame, Lord, that you would wash us clean with the blood of Jesus. That each one here, Lord, will be saved. Lord, that if the rapture should come today, we can say, come so, and come so quickly, even, Lord. Lord, that we can stand before you, Lord, as spotless bride, without spot, without wrinkle, because your blood has taken our sins away, and it separated them as far as the east is from the west. And we thank you, O oh God, Lord, that should you return today, should Gabriel blow that great trumpet, Lord, that everyone would hear the sound of my voice, Lord, will be saved, hallelujah. Lord, and if they believe in their heart and confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus, and that you, O oh God, has raised him from the dead, then that same spirit that saved Christ Jesus will also quicken their mortal body, and together we shall be with you in the air. Lord, that is our blessed hope, O oh God, but not in our time, but in your time, Lord. Lord, allow us to abide and tarry, Lord. Give us your Holy Spirit, Lord, on a daily basis, a fresh measure, O oh God, that we might walk circumspectly before you, Lord. Lord, look upon us, Father, and Lord, like you said in the book of Revelation, that I see your works. I know your works. They are continued before you, Lord. And let this church be found faithful, Lord, when you examine our hearts, O oh Lord, when you look at our works, O oh God, when you look at our deeds, O oh Lord, let them be pleasing to your sight, Lord, but we give you all praise and glory, for we know that this salvation is a gift freely given, and that we obtain it only by the blood of the Lamb. We thank you, Lord, for that sacrifice on Calvary's Hill. We thank you, Lord, that you did a work that none of us could have ever done for ourselves, oh God. We thank you, Lord, that you came. Yes, Lord. You're coming again. And Lord, touch my body today, yes, even, Lord, as I have been straddling with either allergies or whatever this is, Lord, but I know you have overcome the world and you have overcome the infirmities of even my body, oh God. So I pray for myself, Lord. I ask that you touch me, Lord, that you heal me, Lord, that you rid my, my chest of this, Father. Lord, for others in the assembly, Lord, that are still struggling with their bodies, Lord. I ask that you touch the body, Lord. You really heal me into the assembly. This we pray yes, in the matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. And we give you all praise and glory. And we thank you, Lord. We ask you to come and walk amidst us, Lord. Lord, your word says that if two or three are gathered together in your name, you are in the midst of us, Lord. Lord, your word says that if we ask anything in your name, it shall be given unto us, O God. So, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you come and that you abide with us, Lord. For we desire nothing more than your presence, O God. Oh, yes, we have healing. Oh, yes, we have salvation. But, Lord, what we desire is your presence. We want more of you, Lord. More of you, Lord. Help us to walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We thank you in the matchless, precious name of Jesus Christ. And we ask that you bring those that are still on the way, my children included, Lord, you bring them here safely, Lord. Lord, those that are away on vacations, Lord, that you would keep them and give them traveling mercies, Lord. Those that are in the highways and the byways and in the plains, Lord, that you would put your angels above them and below, on either side and front and back, Lord, that no harm to touch them. Those that are in the way of the terrorists that, that are coming into our nation, Lord, Lord, that you would stop them, that you would stop the terrorists, Lord, you would protect your saints, Lord, that you would protect the innocent, Lord. Oh, although we know <coughs> your judgment falls 
on the chest of me and chest, Lord. We pray for your mercy, Lord. We pray for your grace, oh God. We pray for your protection, Lord. Lord, let us truly be a second crown coast. 714 Church, Lord, let us, who are called by your name, stumble ourselves and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, Lord, that you might hear from heaven and you might forgive our sins and you might heal our land. Lord, we pray for this today. We pray for it here, Lord, and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and all of Israel this day, and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I think Pastor Johnny got it to me this morning. That was Pastor Johnny prayer. I couldn't stop praying. I kept thinking of more that we needed to seek the throne about. Amen. Praise God. Oh, the Lord is so good. All the time. Isn't he a good God? Yes, he is. Hallelujah. The one announcement on the bulletin is that we are having a fellowship around the table after church today. They don't have that special deal anymore, but. We're all going to pitch in, I think, $5 and figure it out. But let's welcome Sister Barbara as she comes with the announcements. I didn't give her a warning. Hallelujah, <laughs> Wow. Good morning. Good morning. It's in and season and out. I'm excited this morning. Because God is good. So the announcements. Okay. There will be no morning service next Sunday, April 24th. Amen. Okay. But be sure and come Sunday night because uh, it is in here somewhere, I know. Um, Sunday night. Oh, there it is. There will, there will be our, it will be our first ever biblical dinner next Sunday night at what time? 7 p.m. Minister Deb Ling and Michelle Clark need volunteers to help. Deb, I know everybody knows, but raise your hand. And Michelle, raise your hand. If you want to help for next Sunday night uh, at 7 o'clock, please see one of them. And you know, I just want to read you. Imagine yourself transported to a time before electricity, to a place before upright seating or silverware, to a place illuminated by only ancient oil lamps. Forget the lights, it's just oil lamps, worn by the laughter of friends who are prepared to give their lives for your safety. Imagine yourself reclining at a table with each sip or bite taken holds. Both ancient re revelance, reveal, re relevance and soul level significance. We're going to welcome the biblical dinner. Um, so that's for next Sunday night. Remember, no Sunday morning service. Pastor, oh, uh, also for the tea, uh, the tea, oh, it's on the back. Do all of you have one of these uh, yes. announcements? Okay, flyers, that's good. The tea for uh, May 14th, all the information is on the back of your flyer. We have tickets this morning. See me for tickets. Uh, May, uh, what did I say, May 14th from 1 to 4. I have tickets, they are $15, I believe. And so get your tickets early. So we, in case we fill up. Okay, now this week, we have a lot of things going on. Did you know that? We may be a little church, but we have it together. Amen. We have a lot of activities. You know, I went to a big church a few years ago, and I was never as busy as I am here. And I never was so blessed, and I never had so much fun as what I'm having here. Praise God, praise God. Okay. Did all of you get one of these? It's, uh, it's the uh, Women's Conference for this week in Monterey. If you want one, raise your hand. Pastor Fonda will be happy to make sure you get one. 
Do you need one? Well, you might when I tell you this, that both days are free to us, except for the hotel. And the hotel, I think, is only $90, and you can share. That would only be $45, and you get lunch. You get breakfast and lunch, I believe I saw. Yes, you get breakfast and lunch on Saturday, April 22nd through the 25th. It's the Spring Flame, and I happen to know the, the lady that is putting on the pastor, and she is awesome. Shirley Hackney, right? A lot of you know her. A lot of you know her. She went to a, a lot of you know her. <laughs> and the guest speaker is Trina Grant. It's in Monterey. How many of you like going to Monterey? I like going to Monterey. Monterey. Monterey is beautiful. That's right, Sister Ethel. <laughs> okay, did I? Oh, the Western Conference of the IMA is having this year's West Coast Conference in Temecula, California, April 27th through the 29th. And Pastor Hinkle has brochures. And he's also, I happen to know, he's going to be the speaker uh, on the first night, April 27th. So be sure and come support our pastor. Isn't our pastor awesome? Yeah. Yeah. I just love our pastor. He's just so on the ball. He just he knows the yeah. We love you. I think that's it. Is that it? Oh, there's one more. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to miss that, Deb. Deb, she does an awesome job with our glow. She's our representative for us. And it's the Aglow will be hosting our very own associate minister at large evangelist, David Dodson. Oh, David Dodson will be right here tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. That's Pastor David Dodson. He will be right here. Remember when we ordained him? Wow. He's an awesome speaker. And uh, he did an awesome job when he was here last time. Well, take your flyers home, your announcements, because there's a lot of things going on and it's a lot to remember. If you have your calendars at home, I have my calendar and I have it on the refrigerator so we can always look and see what's happening because there's so much happening here at Victory Tabernacle. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Let us stand to our feet this morning to reach you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us share the love of God this morning as we sing, as we sing and praise and worship Him. Clap your hands, sing to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
He was the Archegos of the people. Archegos is a word used by the apostles to describe Yeshua. Peter refers to Yeshua as the Archegos of life, Acts 3.15. And the one whom God exalted to his right hand as an Archegos and a Savior, Acts 5.31. The writer of the book of Hebrews refers to Messiah as the Archegos of their salvation through sufferings, Hebrews 2.10, and the Archegos and perfecter of faith, Hebrews 12.2. He is the Archegos of life in that he was the first to pass from death to life. In that sense, the Red Sea can be likened unto the grave. Just as Nashon led Israel through the sea to safety on the other side, Messiah leads the way through the grave to safety on the other side through his resurrection. Like Nashon, struggling beneath the waves, he preceded us as the Archegos of salvation. And just as Nashon demonstrated saving faith for all Israel by taking that first leap of faith, Messiah is the Archegos and perfecter of our faith. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to worship the Lord some more. You ready to worship? Yes. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. And uh, come on, let's, let's go before the throne of God. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. I can stand, I can sit, but it, it is our worship. I need to tell you how to worship the Lord in that. If he bless you this week, oh, you will know how to worship our God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our song says, Oh, we are called into this place, gathered in his name to worship him.
worship an awesome God in that. As we prepare ourselves to the Lord, He sees your heart. He sees your soul. He sees my needs. And He knows how much I feel and how you feel. So today, I ask you to forget about yourself. Concentrate on Him this morning. He deserves all the glory, honor, and praise that we have for Him. Because that is why we are created in that. As we sing again, Majesty, worship Him this morning.
what fears you, each of you, as a vessel of ministry to a lost world. Each one of you are significant in his presence. Each one of you are significant in your own walk, in your own sphere, in your own circles, in your own unique way. He has given you a purpose. And he says, because he's given you a purpose, he wants you to look different than those around you. He's coming soon. And many are going to be lost. And you're not going to want to look around and think, oh, I should have saved just one more if I would have maybe shut my mouth and not gossiped. You're not going to want to think, oh, I could have won that one to Christ if I would have not stabbed him in the back because I didn't like when they did something mean to me. Am I being real here? Man, praise God. Oh, what if it's your sister? What if it's your brother? All right, now. You haven't spoken to him in 40 years or 20 years, or you may be seated. Hallelujah. Or three years or a month. Or maybe you are in fellowship with them, but they're just not serving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you get together, you don't let your light shine because you just want to remember good old times. All right, now. How are you going to feel when that trumpet blows? How are you going to feel wow. if instead of planting the love of the Lord in their hearts, you joined in their carousing? And yeah, right. you're forgiven, right. you're going to heaven, and they're going to hell. How will you feel? Wow. We don't lose our salvation over these things. But we lose our rewards. And some of us lose our loved ones. But it's not a message of doom and despair that the Holy Spirit brought today. It's a marriage, it's a, a reminder of how special you are. And how much He has a purpose for you. And it's an encouragement to walk uprightly before Him. So that he can use us, amen? Yeah, yeah. Amen. He wants to use each one of us. Amen. Welcome, my cousin Donna. Donna, good to see you. Praise God. She's a full time caretaker, so she doesn't get to come to church too often. Praise God. So, so happy to see her today. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a unique day. Praise God. Unique praise Sunday. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
And I thank you, O Lord. I give you glory and praise and honor in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. I ask that you touch your body in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 As the Holy Spirit brings people to your remembrance, pray. Each one of you, pray for them. Amen. Pray for them. So, God is good all the time. Well, let's welcome Sister Barbara as she comes to give us an invitation. There is an anointing here this morning that I can't even describe. That I feel like the Lord is healing so many. You know, we're not in the same place that we were. The Lord's taking us to another level. Our church is not going to be the same. We have a breakthrough. I feel the breakthrough coming with our finances. I feel the breakthrough coming with health. I feel like the breakthrough is coming with unsafe loved ones and our and people out there on the street. I just feel it coming. It's just indescribable and it's so exciting at the same time. You know, he hears every single prayer that you, that you pray. Uh, you this week, we needed to call him up. Yes. I love that song. We needed to call him up because some of you that, I don't know, one of you, somebody must need this because the Lord just keeps telling me this to share this with you, but we had a terrible virus on our computer. And you know, I heard on the news this week that Nothing is ever safe. Your phones aren't safe. Your computer's not safe. But God can save it. Yes. God can protect you from the yes, evil can. one. Yes, and so we had to call him up. And you know, uh, Pastor Fonda was even used because she had us read Mark 4.22. Mm -hmm. Because we had lost some major things on our computer. And it was not retrievable. My Lord, and we were pretty upset over it because it was personal things and it was sentimental things. And the Lord says in Mark 4.22, For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it should come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And I thought when she told me that last night, I thought, okay. Yeah, I know that's true. But, you know, we sometimes don't have the faith that we need. All right, now. So, this morning, Ray got on the computer and he said he went to it just like he was supposed to. Didn't have to look for it. It was all there. Amen. And it was supposed to be gone. Amen. And, you know, sometimes when you go to the bank and the money's not there and you think, where's it going to come from? And sometimes it just appears. Man. Or somebody just comes up and gives you what you need. Praise God, praise God. People, we have to have the faith. Yes. God is going to open the floodgates of this yes, church. He will. Yes, he will. Yes, he's he will. going to help us help the lost. Amen. The ones that need financial yes. need. Yes. You, every one of you, every one of you are yes, going Lord. to be blessed. We just have to have the faith. We have to pay our tithes and offering, even above what we imagine or think. God is on the throne. You know, when someone wants to give you something, you know, I'm not a very good receiver. I'm a really good giver. I want to give everybody what I, what I, you know, what they need. But I don't because I don't have it. But I do what I can do. See, the enemy doesn't like that. And so, I give it. We give it. You know, we all want to. Mom is a wonderful giver. Ray's a wonderful uh, And we're just, we love to give. But if somebody wants to give us something, we don't receive it real well. And so I'm working on that. But some of you need to work on it, too. Because we don't want the Lord to rob us of a blessing. 
We love to share. Yes, and you know, I know many of you love to share. I know that. I can see it in your offerings. You love to share. And you know what? God is going to honor our faithfulness. Yes, he is. We don't need to stand up on a big box and just tell you what you need. You know, the Lord performed a miracle. You know, we needed that tax money, and you know, we all gave, and you know what? We paid it last week. Oh, yeah. We paid what we needed to pay, and God honored. He always. $14.70. How much was that again? $6,214.70. Now, you know how many of our boss are here? You know we counted a week ago. How many of us? God is no respect of numbers or people. He is faithful to us. I know I keep saying that, but he is so faithful, Marcy. Marcy's wonderful. She's she. She blesses me so many times. She's always, whenever we have things to give, she's always right in there to give. And many of you do the same thing. Hallelujah. So now I'm going to say to you, now is offering time. It's time for us to share. So let's stand up. I know some of you, if you can't stand up, that's okay. But if you can, Let's stand and worship him in our giving because we are excited about giving. You know, I want to say, Gloria, we're so glad to see Gloria. And she looks like a picture of health, even though we know she's not. But you know what? In God's eyes, she's going to be healed. And Emily is going to be healed. The Lord promised us her healing. And Cleo, oh my goodness, you know, like I said, God is not just in our finances. He's in everything that we do. Amen. Yes, he is. Lord, I just thank you right now for your faithfulness, for be, just being our Father. Lord, some of us don't have a, a, have a earthly father anymore. They've gone on to be with you. And you are our Father. You're everything to us. And for Lord, we want to honor you in our giving this morning Hallelujah. because you are so wonderful. Yes, you are so wonderful to us for, for protecting us, for loving us, for caring about us, for the debts that we owe, Lord, that you're just right there. And Father, I just pray as each one gives that you will bless them abundantly yes, above what we can even think or imagine. Lord, we just praise you in your precious, precious holy name. Amen.
you a story about my Jesus, how he died on a cross at Calvary. And if you listen and believe, his gift you can receive, he will save you.
that may or may not have the same condition she has, but she got her hand in the master's hand. Yes. And her light is shining. So let your light shine wherever you go, on the school ground, the grocery store, the clothing store, the gas station, or wherever, on the streets, let your light shine. Amen. That they may see the glory of God in you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How do we let our light shine? By being different in the world. Amen. 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 Being Amen. set apart, right? Yeah. yeah. The world talks one way, we talk another way. Amen. The world acts one way, we act another Amen. way. Amen. 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 That's how they know where he is. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I was uh, I'm not preaching this morning. And I want to read an exhortation to you. I thought it was really a, a very good illustration. There is a false teaching going around. All right now. And the false teaching is that of what they call extreme grace. All right, all right. And uh, first of all, grace in and of itself and by definition is extreme. Yes. The definition of grace is unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor. Amen. God's grace. A relief from punishment well deserved. Amen. Amen. A pardon. Yes. Forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. These are the definitions of grace. So grace in and of itself, by definition, is extreme. Amen? Amen. But the doctrine is that because we obtained our salvation through the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice on Calvary, yes, that our works don't matter to God. All right. And that we can behave any old way we want to. We can sin as much as we want to sin. We can just do whatever we want, but as long as we accept the salvation freely given to us, that we will still go to heaven no matter what. Amen. Well, that is not what the Bible teaches us. It is not the, it's not the teaching at all. And uh, if we read, and I want to read something from you. Well, I can't find the exact thing I was going to read, but I'm going to go to the scripture. The scripture is better anyway. Amen. We go to the second chapter of Revelation. I'm going to read from the New King James. It's just a little bit easier to read, to understand. And this is what it says. And to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. Verse 2. Let's read. I know your works, right. your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil, and you have tested those that say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars, and you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. All right. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do your first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now, Satan doesn't do anything new. He just repackages the same old lie and calls it something else. All right, all right. And what the Nicolaitans were teaching, 
is this same horrible false doctrine that they call extreme grace or inclusion. They were teaching that the spiritual things are spiritual and the bodily or physical things are physical and it doesn't matter what you do in the physical because your physical and your spiritual are going to be separated at death and only the spiritual good things are going to remain and the bad things are going to be burned up in the lake of fire. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Over and over, Jesus writes, if you go to verse 9, or for, at verse 8, and to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these things says the first and the last, who was dead and who came to life. Who is that? Jesus. The one who, by which we obtain grace. The blood of Jesus, right? He says, I know your works. All right? If you go on down a little bit further, you say uh, in verse uh, 12, and to the angel of the church of Pergamos, right? These things says, he who has the sharp two-edged sword. Who is that? Jesus. I know your works and where you dwell. Okay? And then he goes on and he tells them the things that he has against them. Uh, he says, but I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Over and over. Verse 19. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. As for your works, the last are more than the first. And you go on and on and on. And Jesus keeps saying, he knows our works. Yes, he does. Yes, Do you think does. works are important to God? Do you think our behavior is important to God? Yes. Now, we can repent, and it's as if we never sinned. But we have to allow correction to come to our life. We can't always argue back every single time somebody in spiritual authority over us corrects us. And we need to listen to those that God puts in our lives as our pastors and our spiritual fathers and our natural fathers and not always argue back. Because God doesn't want us to be stiff-necked. He wants us to be repentant. It's out of our heart of love that he brings correction. And he brings us blessings but he always tells us we have to follow his word. Okay, good, amen? Amen. That's for everybody. I'm not single anybody out, myself included. We have to take correction from the Holy Spirit and sometimes through the people he puts in our lives. And uh, although the people are imperfect vessels, God uses imperfect people because all people are imperfect. And so... <laughs> So he has got to use imperfect people, but through his blood, we obtain, obtain righteousness. Amen. And uh, I mean, it, it, I can say it doesn't matter to me if you don't take my correction or my advice, but it, it does only because I love you. Amen. Right. Yes. It doesn't, because it doesn't affect me. If you want to sin and before God, you're going to answer to God for that sin, Amen. or you're going to have the consequence of it in your life and not enjoy the blessing God wants to give to you. Uh, salvation. Here's a good thing, that a way to talk about it. Uh, Armstrong. This is what I read. I'm going to just paraphrase it. Uh, Herbert H. Armstrong used to teach salvation is like a gift. Yes, it is a gift. Right. If I have a gift and I say I have a million dollars that I'm going to give to you, but you need to walk across the room and receive it from me, right? right. 
is it any less of a gift because I require that you walk across the room and receive it from me? Is it any less of a gift if you choose not to walk across the room and receive it? I offered it. Amen. It's yours, but it requires that you work to obtain it. Amen. Is it any less of a gift? If I don't offer it, you can walk to Kingdom Come. You can walk from here to Tokyo if there was a lamp bridge on the way. And it wouldn't matter. You wouldn't have my million dollars. You couldn't earn that million dollars of mine if I didn't offer it to you freely. Amen. Nothing you do could force me to give you that gift. But I can give you a gift and require that you walk and receive it. God gives us the gift of salvation, but he requires that we follow his word Amen. and we receive his instruction and we implement it in our life. God bless me today. I read that early this morning and I purposed to share it, so I hope it blessed you today too. Amen. Well, Pastor Fonda was a little confused when I told her she was preaching today. <laughs> it's not the fifth Sunday. It's not Women's Day, but uh, she had asked uh, Pastor Barbara if she would uh, speak at the women's meeting, but she wasn't sure if Barbara remembered because we keep Barbara so busy, and uh, she had teased her the other night about it, and, and so she got herself a sermon ready, just in case Sister Barbara wasn't ready or prepared. And so after the, uh, but in the morning, she told me what the sermon was that she had for the ladies yesterday. And the Holy Spirit said, that's not for the ladies, that's for the whole church. Wow. And I said, no, but I didn't say anything to Pastor Fonda because I didn't know all of this about Barbara speaking and what have you. And I thought, well, that's silly because most of the church is going to be at the ladies' breakfast and they're not going to hear the same message twice. And so after the uh, breakfast, I asked Pastor Fonda, how did it go? He said, oh, it was beautiful. Barbara did have the word ready, and she brought it, and she was telling me all the wonderful things, and, and she always shares. And I said, oh, now I understand why the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said this word that you had was for the whole church. You're preaching tomorrow. Yes. And she said, I thought you had preachers that you've been having too many other people preach. I said, I do. But I would rather be obedient to the Holy Spirit Amen. than have an opportunity Amen. to be before you today. Amen? Amen. So I'd like you to welcome Pastor Fonda as she comes today with the word that God has given to her. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. 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 Uh, so let's, let's go to him and give it to him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is alive. It's a living word. It comes alive in our hearts and our minds. And Father, you use it in so many ways to draw the people from the darkness into your marvelous light. So we ask you today, Lord, just to be in everything that's said. And Father, quicken my mind and bring to my remembrance the things that you laid on my heart. And Father, be a, let me be a blessing to your people. And I'll give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, when, when uh, Pastor Ken Hinkle was alive, he would always, I was kind of, my ministry, I thought, was I loved it being an intercessor, you know, not in the background and not in the front. Not to, and I loved to teach children. And not too is usually in the background, and and I'm in my comfort zone, you know. Uh, and I would say to him, sometimes I wish I had the holy boldness that you have. And he would always come back and, and try to encourage me, and he'd say, yes, but in quietness and confidence is your strength. And I thought, oh, that's good. So. Uh, being a scholar of uh, Sister Bernard, she would always teach us to go above and beyond and below complete meaning. So one day, when he said that to me, I decided to do just that. And so uh, 
if Kevin can put my scripture up, I will show you what I came on and how it surprised me. Isaiah 30, 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall you be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And then came the one that blew me away. And you would not. I went, Lord, I don't, I hope my husband didn't think I was a disobedient child. But, uh, you know, I decided I, I would leave it there. I would go on and see what it was all about. But his people had come into a place where they were to dwell in safety. And they were to listen to the prophets. He had given them prophets. And he had given them seers, people who could see what God was going to do and tell them about it and have them be prepared. And you know what they did? They told the prophets, don't prophesy to us. And they told the seers, we don't want you to see what God's telling you to tell us. And they even tried to put stumbling blocks in their way so they couldn't see. And when things would come up that they would need help, they would go to their neighbors. And they would try to get that by, even by their help. Even God wanted to bless them freely, you know, freely, freely receive, freely give. But they wanted to go man's route. They would not. And so what they did was they would go and they would ask their neighbors to help them against this enemy or that enemy. And finally, they got, they got on horses and they rode toward Egypt. So, uh, we don't want to be like that. We don't want to give our power over to another. And the people, the people that they brought in to help them, they, they forsook them. They'd leave them out there. After they paid them to come and help them, they would take them up into the mountains and just forsake them. And so they became as a, stum they became as a sign to future generations because they were abandoned on the mountains and future generations would see what happens when you don't listen to God, when you try to go man's way. Right. Whew, I don't want to do that, praise God. So that's why I titled this message, Are You a Would or a Would Not? And I'm gonna be a would, praise God. Uh, so God allowed them to be overtaken and abandoned and their future generations knew what had happened to them uh, it makes me think that God always gives us choices and didn't he in Deuteronomy uh, 30 19 he said I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, we had this in one of our, our ladies' conferences. and we, I think it was the one that we did that was be still and know that I'm God. God was telling us in that, in that conference to choose life. And when we make uh, obedient choices to the Lord, we're blessed. Uh, obedience equals life and blessings. Disobedience equals death and consequences. Let's look at some of the disobediences. Let's start out in Genesis with Adam. Adam made a choice. He made a choice for the, to choose the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil way back in the garden. And knowing that God told him that he would surely die and it resulted in death. Cain had a choice. God had told them to bring a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice to him. That he came was to take his fruit that he grew in the land and his grains and he was to buy a sacrifice and do it God's way. God has a reason for what he tells us to do, and it's usually for the, our, our best interest. And he knew that the sacrifice was going to be a type of what he had prepared from the foundation of the world for us, our Savior, our Jesus, who bled and died for us. And so Cain, he came and he gave 
what he had grown that he was so proud of himself. Pride in the way. That's what that old enemy did, didn't he? He had pride in the way and got kicked out of heaven. But Cain brought his own, and, and it led to the death of his brother, Abel, and to exile and punishment. So we don't want to do that. Now Jonah is another disobedient one. God told him to go down to Nineveh and tell the king down there, those were wicked people down there, and he was afraid. And he really was. And he, he told God, I don't want to go to the Lord. And he ran from God. How many of us can relate? How many of you ran from God? He said, I want you to do this or that. And he said, well, I don't think I can do that, Lord. That's not my personality. That's not my forte. That's not my strength. But so instead, he went and he got on a boat. And there came a storm. And he ended up in the belly of a big fish. And uh, that was not God's plan for him. So uh, that too could have brought about death. God was merciful. And Saul, King Saul, he was chosen by God. Remember when he was anointed to be king? And he was taller than any other man. And he was. But God gave him a command. But when he went in and won the battle that he was to kill all of the all of the enemy. He was to kill every one of them, not leave anyone alive. And you know, in their culture, that, there's a reason for this. In that culture, there's a vengeance law that the families are required to, uh, certain members of the family are required to bring vengeance for the death of their family members. And God, God knows, knows all of these things when he gives us a command. He knows what we're going to be facing. So he told him, kill them all. Don't leave any alive. But Saul decided he wanted to be more like the people in the land. And the other kingdoms, when they would have a battle, they would scare the king and bring the king in and fellowship with him. And later on, they would even sometimes marry their daughters to them because they believed in this royal blood thing. But and uh, then even from that, the, the idol worship would sometimes brought in. God knows what he wants and why he wants it. And we need to listen to his voice. That's why he gives us his word. So Saul, he didn't do what God said. He brought the king back alive and was at uh, some of the choicest meats, I understand. And so uh, the kingdom was rent from him and his seed forever. And uh, he and Jonathan both died in the same day, his son Jonathan that David loved. And now, in the New Testament, the scribes and the Pharisees, they broke God's laws. You know, they had rules. They were not supposed to have a court at nighttime and in secret, but that's what they did. They had a court, and they accused Jesus falsely in a nighttime court in secret they brought false accusations against my Lord and that led to their punishment and uh, Timothy said to Josephus you can read the punishments that they received I, I was meant to do that but I didn't get to it but I do know they brought he brought correction and punishment to these Pharisees and, and that brought Jesus to an unjust trial. All right. So, uh, those are some of, just a few of the disobedient people. Right? We could probably go on for longer, but you get the under, you understand now where I'm going with that. It always brings punishment and death or exile or separation from God and, and never the blessings of God. So we're going to go now to uh, the obedient list. People who decided to be woods, not wood nuts. Abel was obedient with his offering. It was accepted and it pleased God. That's what made his brother King jealous. He saw God's favor on Abel's life. Nineveh repented. They went into sackcloth and ashes and fasted and prayed. And the result was forgiveness and their city was spared. Gideon, now Gideon was winnowing wheat. He was, uh, he considered himself to be the least in the kingdom. He 
he said he even told God or the angel of the Lord when he came that when he called him he said you're talking about me I'm the least among my brothers you know he said you want me to lead soldiers in your battle and uh, he was chosen he was chosen so a lot of people who think that they're the least in the kingdom of God God has a work uh, yesterday when we were leaving the restaurant, little Norma says to me, I'm, t I'm timid, I'm shy, I'm like uh, your Aunt Charlotte, and I, I understand her. And I thought, that's a wonderful thing. She's like me. She was quiet, and but I know her strengths. She has great strengths in prayer and great love for her brothers and sisters. And she has a giving spirit. And I can go on and on with the strengths and sister Norma that she doesn't recognize it herself. But God recognizes our strengths. You know? He's going to really love you. He's talking from the dimension of the earth. He knew you were in your mother's womb. He knew the walk that you would have. He would know the struggles that you would have. And you know what? He loves us. He loves us with his everlasting love. Praise God. So Gideon, he took only three, he, he, the Lord started whittling down the army. He gave him a whole bunch to start with. You know, he started taking him into the water and doing this and that. Pretty soon he's down to 300 men. And the result was that our enemy fell at the hand of only 300, but it was God's plan. We remember the lamps and right. the noise and the shout. And it's just, when you follow God's plan, it's so amazing what he will do with your life. So I want to be a wood. Samuel was a wood. He was brought to the temple by his mother Hannah. You know, he was an answer to prayer. How many of us have had answers to prayer in our children? Our children are a blessing to the Lord. He says, blessed is the man whose quiver is full. Praise God. And so Samuel was Hannah's firstborn. She was barren for many years and she felt chided and left out. And she went to the temple to pray and Eli thought that she was drunk because she was so sorrowful. And she cried before the Lord. When we were in Israel, we were able to visit that place. And there's such an anointing there and a love there from God that you could feel it. You could just feel so close to what God did. And God gave Hannah Samuel, and he served in the temple, and the Lord called him at a young age. Remember, he went in, and he said, he thought Eli was calling him, and he said, Eli told him, go back, and if you hear the voice again, say, Samuel, Samuel, and to hear my Lord, your servant hears. And he did, and God used Samuel, Samuel's words, none of his words ever fell to the ground. He became a great prophet and a blessing to all of Israel. I want to be a blessing to others. I want to be a vessel that God can use to see other people come out of darkness and be blessed. I want to be a vessel that's obedient where God can use me with what talents I have. I lay them in his feet. And I'm so thankful to be a part of his kingdom, a part yeah. of his family. You know, he is Hallelujah. He's a faithful God. Yes, he's he a is. loving God. Hallelujah. Yes, he, is. He, he tells us we're a part of his family. He, grew, he grasped us into the branch. Praise and God. we became, became <coughs> part of his family. Yes. Praise God. When Tim was little, he tells on me all the time when he was little, he wanted to be a, a Jew. He says, I want to be Jewish because that's God's people. God loves them more. <laughs> I said, you can be a Jew. You can be adopted in. You can be grafted in. <laughs> I didn't know that term then, but I do now. I understand it even better. It's even better than adoption. It's grafted in, becoming a part of it. Yeah. Praise God. But uh, I, I just love God, and I love the way he cares about all of us. He doesn't care what our beginnings are. He doesn't care if we have a humble beginning and we don't even have any of the necessities of life. He doesn't care. He only cares that we say yes to him. Because once we do that, 
and we put our lives in his hand, he can do so much. And when uh, Pastor Ted died, I told Timothy one day, uh, you've probably heard me say this before, that I felt like my dreams died when he did. And Timothy, praise God, I think it was the Holy Spirit just filled his mouth and he says, oh, mom. Oh, Jesus. He says, you have wonderful plans, and Dad had wonderful plans and dreams and visions. He says, but the plans that God has, excuse me, the plans that God has for you is so much more than what you could ever think or imagine. You remember that, Mom, and that boosted me, and it made me realize that he was right. That God does have so much more for us than we can imagine, and no matter what trial the enemy throws in our face, yes. God's greater. Yes. Hallelujah. God's oh, greater. Hallelujah. And of course, the fifth one, the greatest obedience of them all, mm. is Jesus. Our perfect example. The obedient Son of God. Yes, you know, He not only fulfilled the scriptures that go about all the way through the Bible, everything that was ever said about him or about he said he came to fulfill the law and he did it. Right. But he was obedient even to their death. Even he remained silent before those scribes that falsely accused him. And he was he was obedient to the cross where he knew he knew he was perfect love. He knew that it was going to break his heart if people rejected him. He knew what he was about to do would bring eternal life for those who would take a hold of it and say yes to him and ask him to be the Lord of their lives. But he also knew that there was no more sacrifice after he did this, after he, the perfect Lamb of God, paid the price if people reject him. That was their last chance. Right. And they would be gone, like with the enemy and, and his followers, because that was the last plan. That was the perfect plan. He is the plan. He is the way, the truth, the life. And he loved us with an everlasting love. He'll never stop loving us. You know, he did come to judge the world. He said he's coming to judge the world. And he will, he will reign and rule with a rod of iron. Yes, he will. And, but we will be blessed in every way that have known him and walked with him. And, and we will rule with him. And praise all, praise all. So I just praise him and I thank you today. Because he does bring life. And that more abundantly. He said, I came to give you life. Have that more abundantly. And we want to choose life today. We want to choose to be a one that would go, one that will say yes to the Lord. And He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. I want to turn to Isaiah 35 now and uh, see how He is going to reward. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. So this is in Israel now. The, the land is blooming and the water is flowing. Where years ago, what was it 1922, those pictures were taken, and it was desolate. There was nothing there in Israel except for desert land and waste land and a swamp. And they said, we don't know why anybody would want this land because it was nothing there. And I saw a picture that was just dry land of one of the, of uh, Tel Aviv. And I said, and today Tel Aviv is a modern, beautiful city on the seashore and, and it's just glorious. And God has brought this to fruition right before our eyes. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, and the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. And they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. 
even with recompense, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of dragons, where each leg shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools should not enter, it shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come, with Zion, come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Now that's what we can expect when our Lord comes. We'll go in with, with true worship and with joy and gladness. We used to sing a song with those words. Do you remember it, Pastor? That one. And sorrowing wet morning shall be away. And the beauty of the Lord shall return. And come and see me unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon me. It was, had become a wasteland. 
And because Christians could not trust and have faith in God's word, that he was going to do exactly what he promised he was going to do, right. that created a false doctrine. Yeah. Right. And that doctrine was replacement theology. And they said everywhere you see the word Israel, put the word church in. God hates the Jews. He's done away with them. And he spoiled the land. And nothing could be further from the truth. God promised to bring them back into their land. And that he would, the desert would bloom again. And the, stream, the waters would stream again. I'm telling you, I've been there now four times. And I've seen with my own eyes. And you all, almost all of you have a phone, a cell phone. Every good modern invention has come now out of Israel. It does bloom in the desert. You go to the desert, and not only does it bloom, they grow colored cotton. Who ever heard of such a thing? Blue cotton, teal cotton, purple cotton, orange cotton, red cotton, blue cotton. You look at the fields of cotton in the desert, and it looks like a rainbow blowing. All right. It's amazing. God's given them such wisdom. They revived the date trees that had been extinct for 2,000 years. They found in an archaeological dig, they found a little fig, a little date, and they, they said, hey, it's still alive. And they, they busted it open, and they, they, they found a way to get both the male and the female tree out of this one date thing. And guess what? They got orchards of date trees that were once extinct, amen? Hallelujah! You ever seen a square watermelon? Well, they didn't like the fact that they had to pay extra for the box. And they had put a round or oblong watermelon in it and had all that extra space around the outside. So they figured out how to grow the watermelon in the shape of the box. So now they have square watermelons and triangle watermelons and everything else in the shape of, so they save on the shipping. You ever had a seedless watermelon? That comes out of Israel. Have you ever used a computer with a microchip? That too comes from Israel. Mom, Pastor Fonda talked today about Gideon and that, that stream that God willed his men down from thousands and thousands to just 300. I think of that stream. If you go on my Facebook and look at my Israel pictures, I think Israel album 8, you'll see me there. And I'm not laughing like a dog. No way. I am reaching from my hand like they did, like the chosen people did. You can go there. You can see it. As Pastor Fonda said, Israel is thriving and teeming. They're, they're exporting more than they're importing. All the, have you ever got a fax machine? Have you ever received a fax or sent a fax? That technology is almost outdated. They created it in Israel. The computer processor created it in Israel. The, uh, the, the, way, the insulins that help the diabetics, uh, the new ones that, that do better than the old ones, they came out of Israel. They have the cure for a prostate cancer came out of Israel. Good things God has used Israel to bless the nations. But we've got to believe God's word is true. Yeah. What he says is real, Pastor Fonda. Yeah. And when he says obey and I'll bless, we must obey yeah. and we must be blessed. And he will fulfill his word every time in our life. Amen. Yeah. Every single time God will fulfill his word in your life. Are you here today? And you've been asking God for something. And you think he's decided not to give it to you. But it lines up with this word. I want to tell you, he has it for you today. Whatever it is, if it's a healing, he has it. If it's provision, he has it. If it's comfort, he has it. If it's deliverance, he has it. If it is comfort, he has it. If it is peace, he has it. And he says in his word, ask, and you might receive if I decide I like you enough. What? No, no, no. Oh. Ask, 
and that shall be given unto you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to close out, but I'm going to go to the piano, and I'm going to ask everybody to come to the altar, as I do. And we're just going to stand in faith believing that the Holy Spirit is going to cause us to be obedient to what God is telling us to do. Oh, there's Brother Leo. That's even better. <coughs> as he comes, I want to ask everybody here to come to the altar, even if you have to if you can't stand, then find the first row or two to sit down in. But let's just, as a family, come to the altar. Let's just come here. We're not nothing embarrassing. Let's just gather at the altar of God and declare that we love Him and that His word is true. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 First thing, Timothy, we, we prayed for your husband today. And uh, we know God's going to completely completely heal his body. Amen. Off from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. And not only temporarily, but God's going to give you guys a plan. I don't know whether it's supernatural or whether it's going to be from the doctors, but God's going to speak to you, Mother, and he's going to give you a plan for your husband. Oh, Jesus. I started speaking and the Holy Spirit got all over me. I didn't plan to say that. But it's going to give you the wisdom, Mama. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For a plan that's going to be lasting. And that blood pressure is going to be in control the rest of his life. In Jesus' name. I say he shall live and not die. In Jesus' name. I proclaim the latter house shall be made in the former house in Jesus' name. I proclaim that he who began a good work in past Timothy Moti is faithful to complete it, even until the day of salvation. And he will complete it. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we used to sing a song like this. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. Give me a key, brother Leo. It's good for you.
Amen. Hallelujah. God, as we're here today at your altar, Lord, we just come in obedience to what you told us to do, Father. I don't know why. I know you can heal us with understanding on this altar. I know you can heal us with understanding in front of this altar, touching the door. But Lord, this is the way you chose to move today, Lord. Just like you told a man to dip in Jordan seven times, Lord. You didn't need him to do that, but Lord, obedience is better than sacrifice. So Lord, we stand here in your obedience right now. Lord, forgive our disobedience, Lord. Cleanse us by your blood. Lord, and now those things we've asked you for that line up with your word, we just claim them. We say the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And all the saints of God said, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. Let's receive it. Amen. Let's receive it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. And we are.